Hello YouTube viewers welcome to my show Future Friday in today's episode we're going to talk about warp drives so let's dive right into it well what is going on around here basically we are talking about something that travels faster than light basically 300000 km per second you, we want to exceed that speed now general relativity on the matter is very clear basically you can travel at light speed only if you are 100% mass less basically like a photon if you have mass there is a graph that you can plot how much energy it requires to travel faster and faster now in that mathematics you can simply plot out what it will take to basically reach light speed not faster than light speed just light speed itself the answer would be infinity that's the problem basically if it takes infinity just to reach at light speed how the heck you going to cross it so that's not possible that is why the uh, the the moment we learned about this like you know light speed as a like final barrier that we cannot pass th then people started to create science fiction stories around it is like okay what if we can pass it basically you have star wars you have star trek you have battle galactica and countless more now on top of that it's not just a storytelling element you also have to understand this if we can figure it out if we can truly travel faster than light we can do interstellar travel because many times you have to understand even if we are traveling at light speed let's say somebody created something that travels light speed or let's say 99.99% speed of light removing time dilation let's say you remove the time dilation for the crew because time dilation will only happen for the crew not for the people on earth basically you will have a scenario where it takes 4 year to go to alpha century like 4 whole whole year so that is a problem like if you want to really do uh, like, like you know galactic level civilization like star wars or star trek you have to have faster than light travel okay then what is the reason behind this all the hype recently basically there was a seed idea the idea was created by Miguel Acubier in 1994 now he created the idea now what he did was very clever basically special relative um, like relativity and special relativity was saying no you cannot go faster than light so they took the mathematics and inverted it basically what it would take to do that basically same way you have e equal to mc square what if you have mc square and then you try to figure out the e basically we do that in mathematics it's quite normal so he uh, created a solution based on general relativity so without bypassing it using general relativity itself because we know for a fact that general relativity is true now again resolution of that the theory can be proven in the future that you know we could have even better resolution but right now we know for a fact general relativity works there is no discussion about it it works so so first thing he realized you cannot go faster than light that's it you cannot go faster however there is a catch the catch is the space itself can move faster than that. basically space time itself think of it this way uh, we are here on earth we observe one galaxy that is moving very fast in this direction now how do we know that is moving and it's moving fast basically doppler shift can help you with that now doppler shift is telling you yo that that puppy is going fast and is going very far what if you have something here some other galaxy and that is moving far and very fast so what about the distance between them is that distance increasing faster than light speed the answer is yes now have we actually find this out actually tested it yes hubble telescope to every james webb telescope when it's ever get launched or something like that uh, we'll find out that with more and more details because we have enough uh, evidence like actual evidence actual photographs from actual measurement astronomical measurement to tell us that yes space time itself can expand faster than light speed so basically you can have a scenario where uh, after the uh, let's say uh, very long like very long like few billion trillion hex trillion years in the future you can have a scenario where all the galaxies would have moved so far so fast so uh, we could have a scenario where light from those galaxies will uh, basically would be traveling uh, this will be so far apart the gap between us would be expanding faster than light so new, no new photons will reach us and the photons that have left before the light speed was created it would be so red shifted it will go into background radiation uh, background noise basically we cannot detect it so uh, the science is there basically you can expand space time faster than light so he took that and created a mathematical model on that now he just created a what you call a base a foundation how to do this not a complete drive now again in science you can, no one person can do everything but you have to understand now he created the idea in 1982 then people started to add on to uh, some people were like yeah yeah this does not work because you have to understand when he created the mathematics the answer was you need more energy than the entire equivalent of the universe itself not the galaxy the universe itself so flat out people are like yeah it's a good fun mathematical experiment good thought experiment but not really practical however then you have the uh, person known as harold g white basically that's why you will many times type uh, uh, basically Alcubierre white uh, warp, warp drive so this person comes along and is like okay uh, he's 
I basically responsible for a lab in NASA that is known as NASA Eagle Labs, basically advanced propulsion and power systems. They deal with uh, magic voodoo things basically. Uh, if you there is a, even a remote scientific uh, hypothesis that this might work, they will test it out. They are not the people who are like you know let's build a methane engine, let's build a you know a propane engine or things of that nature like you know SpaceX. They are doing something far out like oh you want to build a time travel machine, you go to them. You want to build faster than light travel, you go to them. You want to build a magic EM drive, you go to them. These people will test it out. So he made it more practical. He did the mathematics basically the same way Newton had the mathematics and then come out, comes along Einstein and refines the mathematics. Same thing happens here. He comes along, he refines the mathematics. So he at the first glance, he does the some mathematics and all that with the geometry improvement and all that. And he's like, okay, let's reduce the energy consumption from universe to size of the Jupiter itself again manageable comparatively speaking but you are still talking about the jupiter and he uh, not only that he is like okay there is mathematical something on paper he created this inframe inframeter uh, basically why judai what field inframeter now the idea with that is that actually test the warp drive now what i mean by testing the warp is he's only meant to test the warp system is there a warping happening or not if the warp happens properly and they are still working out because the, this instrument is so sensitive same problem happens with the uh, em drive if the instrument is too sensitive you will have way too many false positive so they are still uh, testing it and uh, soon they will move into vacuum chamber testing and high vacuum chamber testing all that they will do that but the idea with that is if even a remote warping can happen like warping of space time not faster than light travel just warping itself they should be able to detect it using this uh, instrument so basically you can understand he took some mathematical idea refined it made it more quote unquote feasible then he created the instrument to actually like test it out whether the warp can happen or not that is why like so much momentum uh, you know recently has been pushed into the warp drive system so okay what is the science behind it basically okay people are working on it these are scientist people these are actually qualified people so what is happening like in terms of scientific front basically you are moving the space time itself you cannot travel faster than like flat out you cannot so the best analogy you can think of it is in this way rather than like uh, how we have uh, doing anything basically you're traveling on something you are traveling inside something like a submarine it's not a boat where you are rowing things you are just like moving the things around you we are creating a warp so space time is the like you know sea for you now you will move the space time itself and you will do that by creating a bubble now that bubble will expand and contract uh, ahead or behind of you based on how you want to travel and depending on how quickly you can do that not the travel itself how quickly you can do that and if you can time it right you will end up moving forward in uh, you know in space and you can uh, move faster than that because there is no mathematics that says this cannot be done basically the same way the two universe that are expanding away uh, there is no mathematics that says hey gap between these two things cannot be like you know exceed the light speed acceleration same thing is happening here it's like you are creating a bubble that bubble is moving faster you are not moving faster. that bubble that warp bubble is moving faster and there is no limit on warping itself basically their mathematics uh, even they pushed it to like 9000 light speed or 10,000 light speed the reason 9000 was used because it's like uh, in star trek tv show the person uh, got inspiration from star trek itself so that is why so warp factor is like you know in the mathematics and all that so that's the science behind it you cannot travel faster than light but you can make the space time travel for you Okay, how the heck is gonna do that? What is this? How the heck is gonna do that? Well, uh, same way we have matter and antimatter, we have gravity and we must have anti-gravity. Like mathematically, it must be there. So the idea is either you're gonna take a negative matter or energy because matter and energy are interchangeable because of e equal times square, and then you're gonna do the warping. So that negative matter will interact with the space time. Now you have to understand, I'm talking about constructing or warping space time. Now, if you make a rod of space time, let's say this is a rod, mathematical rod, which is made out of space time. This is a rod made out of steel the hsd steel rod is so flexible compared to this it will look like it's made out of nothing and uh, uh, you know the rod made out of space time would be like diamond so you have to understand this it is very hard to bend space time now do we bend space time we don't but uh, stars do black holes do so you get an idea because bending space time is not uh, some voodoo concept we do that it's just to do it well to do it enough to like create gravity it, it requires a tremendous amount of energy so uh, then the mathematics started to happen and he came up with the idea donuts the ba donut back and forth and uh, this will create the field this is the reason like the original drive had just uh, no mathematical architecture to it that's why it was requiring power equivalent of like a, you know freaking universe 
now once he created the donut architecture it's like okay power went down to jupiter level now then he realized uh, the space time is very hard so how do we cut hard objects in earth basically we oscillate it so he's gonna do high frequency oscillation on these donors this will soften quote unquote soften the space time and that will allow you to consume less power so basically it's the same way we have ultrasonic glass cutters and all that so that high frequency oscillation will allow us to make the warp much more efficiently rather than consuming like you know jupiter sized fuel tank we're gonna need like 700 kilos of that so that's how it works basically you have something that negatively interacts with uh, matter uh, basically space time we know matter reacts with uh, space time and we have observed the effect and that's the whole point of weight and all that so it does that everything is tested about this just we have to find negative of that then we have to have create this geometry geometry has been tested out like mathematically the geometry works out so we create the geometry then we oscillate this option to reduce the power consumption and voila we have our warp drive now can this be real well this is something like uh, okay if you have this fuel we can drive a car that will you know run on like you know this power for 50,000 years something like that now problem is where is that fuel now in this scenario the fuel is negative matter or energy depending on that now where this this idea that we can even attempt to have something like that well think of this way we are doing a recent observation of our universe itself suggested that our universe is expanding okay everybody knows that what's the fancy about it it's accelerating basically it's supposed to be expanding let's say at uh, one light speed it's expanding at two light speed and next time we measure it is expanding at three light speed it's accelerating the expansion is accelerating how the heck that is happening so uh, we did all the math and then we created two blank spots the blank spot one is dark energy blank spot number two is dark matter nobody understands what dark energy or dark matter is it's just something as a placeholder like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said is something very interesting it's like these things should have been named you know George or uh, Hulalala something like that basically we do not know it's like a mathematical uh, concept of like you know putting x variable find out y or something like that so whenever somebody says dark energy or dark matter you have to understand it's a placeholder we know it exists we have observed this effect but we do not know what it is how it works how it has this kind of effect we do not know so it's unknown so that itself has that uh, property that we are looking for the negative property basically so based on that people are like yeah we may be able to like you know somehow make it because think of this like we have matter here we don't have antimatter but can we make antimatter from normal matter yes that's what particle accelerator do so same way we are hoping that somehow we can figure out in the future that what is dark energy or what is dark matter or are they interchangeable or uh, can we make normal energy into dark energy or can we make dark uh, normal matter into dark matter if we can figure that out then yes mathematically this becomes possible now again that only solves the mathematical aspect after that when you actually start to build the basically ship and all that i have provided a very interesting uh, basically one hour long interview with this person uh, which just happened like three months ago so it's quite recent and uh, you can figure out like oh, when he was doing the math he was figuring out like brake will be running away from you at the faster than light speed so you will never be able to apply brakes and that same will happen with accelerator so you will never be able to get to up to the speed and uh, slower than the speed and there are like a lot of sub problems like once you actually f have the fuel source actually have the negative system then you have this problem so there's a lot of sub problem like mathematically till this we know like okay 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 but it's like when you actually start to accelerate a ship there's a whole lot of issue that we have to deal with then we come to the final line in perfect because the moment you travel faster than light you end up going in past now uh, that is very complicated and hard to understand and that is why i would suggest you watch that interview because he will make it uh, more obvious like because he's the person who started this so you have to understand, like even Stephen Hawkins was against this idea. Basically, he uh, quoted basically chronology, protection, conjecture. Basically, no matter what you do, if you try to break a uh, basically space-time continuum, basically you want to go back in the time, something will destroy you. Something like there is no science behind it. It's not like okay, this will happen or that will happen. Something will happen. You cannot break it. Basically, it's unbreakable. No matter what happens. And uh, many people say that it does not mean that we can't travel faster than light. We, that simply means we cannot use uh, faster than light we to go back in the time the, the moment we try to go back traveling time itself then yeah we'll be destroyed so you have to understand like the uh, people are looking at the same uh, conjecture at both ways some is like hey that uh, that actually is very good for us that means we can do faster than light travel but we cannot do time travel so that makes our whole uh, basically uh, ecosystem of time itself intact so there are people looking at it so we have dark matter we have dark energy we have no idea what it is and there are a hell lot of sub problems like before we can have like you know engage what so a hell lot of problem and stephen hawkins mathematics is not something that you can be taken lightly so there is a lot of deal with this it's not as uh, uh, like you know many youtube videos i'm watching and people are like yeah 
we got we got it like you know tomorrow we we can get no it's like it's unknown on top of a unknown on top of a unknown it's not something that you can just say that we are here like heck we the moment we discover like you know we can make that matter we realize okay that that was the conjecture was like you know doing that causes some kind of another uh, adverse effects that we do not know of like you have to understand that is why like you you have one unknown in your mathematics okay awesome you have hundreds of unknown then the mathematics is like a joke it's like a equation trying to find out something that without having any information so can it be real maybe but i will not put too much faith in it or that the fact that we even gonna see this in less than 100 year so this was my presentation on warp drive i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button and if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i would urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching